Welcome back, friends, to another edition of Implants Made Simple. Today we have a live surgery uncut, narrated over in the tooth number four position. So let's go ahead and get started. In the four position, the first thing we're going to do in this edentulous space is we're going to identify the mucogingival junction. And we assess that it's a little bit too close to where the incision would be for the tissue punch. So we're going to do our AGG technique, apical gingival displacement. We start by making a crustal incision, cheating it towards the palate, and then tracing it back and forth one time. And what you can see here in the mirror is a beautifully placed crestal incision, lingually displaced, somewhat to the lingual. Then we use a, 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 a molt nine to elevate the facial flap, but not the palatal flap. Leave the palatal flap alone. Holding it back out of the way with the Minnesota, the surgical guide is seated. We verify by looking in the access windows that we are seated properly and there's no gap, so we're confident that we can proceed. This is a BioHorizons implant placement system. And this particular one is the keyed system that uses same length drills the whole time, but different diameters. They're color coded, so this is a green case. That was a 2-0 drill, and notice how quick we go in and out with the drills. So you will always want to endeavor to be very fast with your drills. Get in, get out. Once the drill is to length, there's nothing else for you to do in there but heat up the bone, and you don't want to do that. So we're setting the 2.5 drill in place, and in and out. And if you see pink bone on your flutes, you know you've got good bone. Now, we picked up the, the third drill, and the third drill usually goes even faster than the first two. So watch how fast this drill is, in and out, okay? Pink bone is an indicator that you have bleeding in the bone, which means you're engaging some trabecular bone, which is a good thing because bleeding is the first step to healing. So notice my assistant's covering the mouth. Before we go into the mouth with any small objects, we want to make sure we have a throat screen in place. So she was grabbing the throat screen with her other hand. We go into the back of the mouth with the head of the instrument and bring the implant and driver to the front. We're going to drive it until that little plastic snap link touches the top of the master cylinder. That's the metal piece inside the guide. But what happens is right here, our motor torques out. So our motor was set to 70 Newton centimeters. So we're going into a healed site with the BioRisons Pro implant, which has a really nice thread pattern. And in a healed site, it's quite possible that we're not gonna get all the way down to length before we reach that 70 Newton centimeters insertion torque on the motor. So watch what we're gonna do. We're gonna use our wrench to do a tapping technique. So we're gonna back it up and then we're gonna tighten it. And every time we tighten it, we take the implant just a little bit deeper. Okay, so then we're going to back it up a little bit and then go a little bit deeper. So I'm using the implant as a tap to tap the bone to get the implant to go to depth. Clearly, I could have just gotten on it with the wrench and then gone all the way down to depth. But that would have done is created a very high insertion torque, but it doesn't create any area for bleeding. So I want to make sure my torque is a little bit lower for bleeding purposes. So we have a perfectly placed implant at just about three minutes and 48 seconds into the procedure. The implant's placed perfectly symmetrical, right in the central developmental groove. We place our three millimeter standard regular healing abutment, three millimeters tall, regular profile. We use physical, uh, we use our, our finger to reapproximate the keratinized gingiva on the buckle, and it's a little floppy. I don't like that. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to place a suture around it. I was going to use some PGA for this case. We're going to verify that the healing development is down before we place the suture. I love these little, we use a Nomad radiograph in these handheld XCP holders. They're great for implants to allow you to get the proper angulation 
so that you are going to get an implant where the radiograph is perpendicular to the to the platform of the implant. So why is that important? Because we want to make sure that our abutment's down, and if you don't get that radiograph perpendicular, it's difficult to see that interface. So back to the suturing technique that I was going to do. What I was going to do is I was going to use the suture collar that's around the abutment of the uh, the abutment that I placed. There's a little groove around the top. So almost like a horizontal sling suture. What I do is I, I take my first bite on the facial or on the facial towards the distal and I take another bite on the facial towards the mesial and I create a loop and what I was going to do is I was going to slide this loop down over the lingual side of the healing abutment where there's a groove and what happened was I made a mistake and the mistake is there's too much palatal tissue for that loop to engage so right now I'm going oh shoot my little clever trick here to use the suture groove isn't working because the three millimeter tall healing abutment is concomitant with the tissue, which is oftentimes the case because usually the tissue is about three millimeters thick there. So I wasn't able to get the suture to engage that suture groove. So eventually what I have to do is I have to abort. So now I've aborted, I'm a little disappointed in myself, and what am I going to do? What I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a regular horizontal mattress suture. So instead of using the suture groove on the lingual side, I'm going to use the, the, the tissue on the lingual side to engage the suture. So starting on the distal, I love these Castoviejo needle drivers. They're round so they don't they don't look like scissors they're round like an art brush they give you a lot of control with your fingers to rotate watch as i rotate the head of this needle into the tissue with just finger motion see that just a little twist of the fingers allows you to rotate that into place and i i love these i use them in pretty much every single case now i've taken a bite on the, on the lingual twice that's the second bite there on the lingual and now we're passing it back on the mesial towards the facial, and we're gonna make our last bite starting from the palatal side of the tissue, the, the uh, periosteum side, and come through the facial. My assistant's using cotton pliers instead of tissue pickups. That always makes me happy. And then we're gonna take our suture and we're gonna just tie it off with normal horizontal mattress. This is only necessary for the AGD technique when that facial tissue is floppy. And in this case, because it was elevated down into the mucosa, it became loose and a little bit floppy. So at that point, I said, okay, let's put a little suture in here just to help hold it in place. Most of the time, if it's not loose, then what you get is you get uh, it's self-sealing. You don't have to put a suture in there. It's going to actually hold this position and it's not going to go anywhere. Now watch what we got here. Do you see that little gap in the tissue? That's going to epithelialize in with attached keratinized gingiva. We just apically displaced our buccal flap to help to ensure we have three or four millimeters of attached gingiva on the facial. And despite doing the suture wrong and taking our time, we still did this whole procedure in under eight minutes, which is really, really fast for a patient because they're, they're so nervous, their heart's going so fast. And doing these guided surgeries like this, especially at a healed site, it's just a really lovely procedure when you know you can provide that kind of position control and that kind of efficiency and delivery for your patients. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, Smile Engineer, helping you re-engineer your practice every day.